Welcome to the Checkpoint Certified Security Administrator course. In this particular module, we are going to take a look at threat prevention. We are going to see how to protect the organization from malware attacks. We are going to be doing this using threat emulation and threat extraction blades. Now, if you recall, in the previous session, we also took a look at threat prevention using IPS, using antibots, and using antivirus. And if you recall, we said that your IPS is used to protect the network or to protect the organization from network-based attacks, and your antivirus is used to protect the organization from viruses, from trojans, from malware, and the rest. And then your antibots is actually used to prevents communication between infected hosts and remote command and control servers. And then after we enabled the um, antivirus, antibot, and IPS, we had to run a test on Checkpoint's CP Check Me website, where we got this result showing that, okay, the anonymizer usage has been blocked, and then data leakage has also been blocked due to the policies that were configured so far. So to get an holistic threat prevention, we need to ensure that the five blades are turned on. So it's not just enough to turn on your IPS, it's not enough to turn on your antivirus, it's not enough to turn on antibots. We also need to ensure that other blades are turned on as well. If you recall, for your threat prevention, there are five blades. You have antivirus, you have antibots, you have IPS, you have threat prevention, and you also have your threat emulation. Okay, so let's turn on threat extraction and threat prevention and threat emulation. If you recall, once again, we said uh, threat extraction is used to remove active elements from documents before they are downloaded so threat extraction is going to assume that all files are malicious and it is going to remove macros it is going to remove hyperlinks it is going to remove javascript and everything it is going to reconstruct those documents to deliver a sanitized version of the documents before users can now download the file so if you're trying to download a document all those things are going to be removed and then you'll be given a safer version but for threat emulation, what threat emulation does is that when a particular user is trying to download a particular file, that file is going to be emulated in a sandbox environment. So the file is going to be tested, it's going to be analyzed in a sandbox. If the file is malicious, then users would not be permitted to download that file. But if the file is not malicious, then users can proceed with the download. So let's turn on threat extraction. Okay, so having turned on threat extraction, the very next thing that we'll do would be to turn on threat emulation. So let's turn this on. So for threat emulation, after turning it on, we're going to choose to analyze our files on threat cloud. Well, you have three options. You can use checkpoints threat cloud to run your analysis so when users are trying to download their files it will be inspected on checkpoints websites on checkpoints threat cloud before users can now download it that's one option another option will be to emulate it locally on your firewall well this is fine just that performance might be a little bit impacted so if you want maximum performance you can use checkpoints websites to run that but if you feel that you do not want your data to leave the environment per se, you can choose to analyze this locally on your firewall. If that's the case, you can select analyze locally on this threat emulation appliance. Then one good thing about checkpoints is, is also the fact that it allows you to use third party software. So you can choose to run the emulation on, on a third party appliance. If that's the case, you can select this particular option. Okay, so let's select um, Threat Cloud Emulation Service. Then we'll click on Next. And then it is going to check our Threat Cloud compatibility. 
ideally before you can use checkpoint straight cloud you need to have a subscription okay so if you have that subscription then everything is going to be fine but if you do not have the subscription then you might probably receive errors letting you know that there's a need to get subscriptions okay so it's still checking the threat cloud connectivity okay so let's see this is saying that we require internet connectivity so okay so let's let's confirm that we can actually um, reach the internet okay okay so there's internet connectivity now let's confirm that again okay this looks fine so let's click on next okay so as you can see we are going to select the option to clean potentially malicious parts from files then we'll click on next we'll click on finish now this is beautiful so if you want to change your options later you can click on threat emulation or threat extraction so when you click on threat extraction you can choose to make it active and then for resource allocation you can choose to stop cleaning files when the disk space is below 20 percent you can choose to delete original files after 14 days and many more if you want to integrate this with web api with the application programmable interface you can integrate with the api if that's the case then for your threat emulation as you can see you can activate it according to policy um, and the analysis is going to take place on threat cloud and then let's see more options okay then you, if you want you can also configure the limit memory um, if you want you can configure the memory allocation okay the threat emulation shouldn't use 70 percent of more than 70 percent of your cpu or of your ram okay so having configured all this the next thing that we need to do will be to come to security policies okay so let's okay fine when we come to security policies we're going to come to custom policy for threat prevention well we're, we're making it of the same profile that we created the last time so we're going to come down to profiles we'll click on test streets to edit this well i'm um, so again to double click on it then let's if you remember in the last session we configured uh, ips we also configured um okay let's see so we configured ips we configured antivirus as well so we've done all this so this time around we're going to be configuring threat emulation and threat extraction so when we click on threat emulation so for threat emulation we're going to choose to inspect files coming from okay so let's inspect files coming from all interfaces for the protocol we want threat emulation to work for web for ftp and for server message block which is a smb we also want to process all file types okay so by default about eight file types are selected but we're going to choose all file types because a threat actor might choose to send malware using a particular file type so it, it's best to to select all okay for archives we okay so if you want you can choose to prohibit certain file types in archives okay let's see if there's a bat okay so we can choose to maybe prohibit bats okay so having done this we'll click on ok then we'll come to the emulation environment we're going to be emulating on checkpoint stress cloud we'll come to advanced okay so for the emulation connection handling mode we're going to choose maximum prevention now rapid uh, rapid delivery would ensure that the files are analyzed faster but not so well okay because it's trying to run the analysis within seconds but if you choose 
maximum prevention, then it might take longer, but then it will ensure that a holistic inspection is done. So let's go for maximum prevention, security at all times. So we'll go for maximum prevention. Then we're going to come to threat extraction. And then for threat extraction, we are going to... Okay, so for the user check, it's fine. For the protocol, we're going to select web. You can choose to also protect your mail, that is SMCP. Then we're going to potential, so we're going to extract potentially malicious parts from all files. Okay, so let's say that once to extract all of these, it's fine. It, um, if you check this, you would see that it would extract macros. It is going to extract hyperlinks that are sensitive. It would extract anything that that is potentially malicious. And then for the extraction settings, we want to process all files. And then for the file types, we're going to increase this. We'll change this from 25 to all the file types. So let's select everything. Okay, so having done this, then we'll come to... Okay, this is, okay, as you can see, it's 49 out of 49. So we'll click on Advanced. We can choose to log all, file, all files. Well, if you log all files, it would... It would impact the space or the memory of your that's the hard disk of your SMS. Okay, so for corrupted files, any file that is corrupt, we're going to block it. We can also choose to block um, encrypted files. And then having done this, okay, so let's check our indicators. Okay, so having done this, we're going to click on OK. Then we'll install our policy. And after installing our policy, we're going to run that test again. So let's install our policy. So now that policy installation has been completed, we are going to run our test. So to run our test, we'll have to visit cpcheckme.com. And then when we visit cpcheckme.com, we'll have to run a test. Okay, let's wait for this to come up. Okay, this is fine. So we'll click on, we'll check everything and then let's check what we've done so far. Okay, let's check if we are protected against malware infection, against command and control communication, zero day threats, browser exploits, anonymizer usage, and data leakage. So now that the test has been completed, as you can see, we are fully protected. So this is how you configure your threat prevention. So with this, we've come to the end of this particular module. I'll meet you in the next one. Thank you.